is Marshall Giller, Head of Investment Research here at FX Primus, bringing you the day's schedule for Friday, uh, December 18th. So, after all the excitement of this week, we've got a pretty quiet day in store today. The market already knows the results of the Bank of Japan Policy Board meeting that took place overnight. While they didn't change the size of, the, of their uh, quantitative and qualitative easing program, they did extend the average maturity of the Japanese government bonds that they're buying to 7 to 12 years from 7 to 10 years currently. They also established a new program to buy 300 billion yen of exchange-traded funds on top of the 3 trillion yen that they're already buying. And they raised the cap on purchases of an individual real estate investment trust that they get to 10% of each issue from 5%. Now, these moves counter some speculation in the market that they're getting ready to end the QQE program as the Bank of Japan's internal measure of inflation gets nearer to their 2% target. In that respect, the move is negative for the yen, which was the market's initial reaction, although dollar yen quickly moved lower in tandem with the new Tokyo stock market, as it usually does. Uh, there are no major European economic indicators on the schedule today, nor are any ECB board members speaking about ECB policy. So, the only thing on the European schedule is the second and final day of the EU summit. The big issue there is UK Prime Minister Cameron's demands for renegotiating Britain's membership in the EU. There seems to be some progress. Press reports say leaders may be willing to accept some sort of opt-out clause for the UK, although it might not be possible to enshrine this in the uh, treaties in time for Cameron's in-out refer referendum, which has to be held by the end of 2017, but could take place as early as next summer. Uh, an agreement, if they do reach agreement on this, it could help to boost the, uh, the pound today. Now at 13.30 GMT, uh, Canada announces its inflation figures for November. The Bank of Canada is as focused on inflation as any other central bank. The main concern for them will be the effects of a lower oil price on inflation. Now, having held rate, uh, rates uh, study recently, any weakness in this inflation data will possibly be new calls for a cut in interest rates. The market's looking for the CPI to be up 0.1% month on month, a slight deceleration pl from plus 0.2% month on month in October, and looking for core prices to be unchanged. Then at 14.45 GMT, GMT, we get the market services and composite PMI for the U.S., that's not as big as the manufacturing PMI, but it's still worth watching. The market expects services PMI to decelerate a bit to 55.9 from 56.1. That could weaken the dollar a little bit, but probably won't have that much of an effect. Then over the weekend on Sunday, December 20th, there's going to be a general election in Spain. The election is likely to deliver an unprecedentedly fragmented parliament. The country has been governed by one of the two major parties for more than 30 years, but this time, the left-wing Podemos party and the pro-business citizens party threatened to deny any party a majority. Now, given the stunning result of the recent elections in France and Poland, this election will be closely watched. Although I don't think the likely result is going to be that market-affecting, since neither of the two upstart parties is expected to be able to form a government on its own. This is Marshall Gittler, head of investment research at FX Primus. Get more market insights on our education pages and turn your trading ideas into action with FX Primus, the safest place to trade.